Welcome. As you may have heard, we've been nominated for the next Renception. Season 1, Episode 8. So, we will be reacting to Becca Doss, reacting to McFly, reacting to The Wolf Johnson, reacting to The Singer Reacts, reacting to Bell Development, reacting to The Dan Wheeler Show, reacting to Ren, I mean Disco Doc, reacting to Knox Hill, reacting to Ren, reacting to Knox Hill's reaction of Ren. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new. I'm Becca, and on this channel, I'm reacting my way through eating disorder recovery alongside complex chronic illness, one video at a time. And usually, I go with the music videos, uh, whether they're topical, related to mental health or chronic illness, or whether they're just extremely fun rap breakdowns, or whether they're just completely enjoyable musical performances. We love that on this channel. However, today we've got something a little different and a little special, and I'm really honored to be a part of it. So I was actually tagged by McFly fly and you can check his description in the channel below <laughs> description in the channel you can check his channel link in the description below that's what i was going for <laughs> as well as all of the other reactors who have taken part in this yet and what is this well i'll tell by the way everyone's down there go check them out as well as all of the other reactors who have taken part in this yet and what is this well i'll tell you and if it sounds a little confusing know that it's because it's chaotic for even those of us who are participating but it's also a fun time i'm really really honored and humbled honestly to be included so thank you for the tag mcfly and this is renception episode seven now the concept now oh she's going over the concept of Renception. It was started by Disco Doc, the Naughty Therapist. If you have not checked out his channel, he will also be linked below. So definitely go do that. Top tier content for sure. It's totally not Ren, <laughs> except it might be Ren, except it probably isn't, except it totally is, except he's denying it, except it might be it. You'll see what I mean if you're a Ren fan. If you're not, what are you doing? If you're not a fan, then you just haven't heard his music because you can't not be a fan once you've heard it. But anyway, I've avoided like any overt spoilers because I had a feeling I might get tagged because I knew this was a thing that was going on, but I didn't want to inadvertently spoil anything. Thing. So I am episode seven. The, this whole project started when the Disco Doc reacted to Knox Hill reacting to Ren, reacting to Knox's reaction of Ren. So that's how this all started. And that was episode one. Isn't that trippy? <laughs> that's just mind boggling right there. And for Becca to nominate me, it's awesome. I just joined this Ren community and it's been nothing but love and support and it's it's very very cool to be a part of it and look at that poster behind her man it's very uplifting i love it all right reacting to Ren, reacting to Knox's reaction of Ren. So that's how this all started. And that was episode one. So in this episode, episode seven, I'll be reacting to McFly, reacting to the Wolf Johnson, reacting to that singer reacts, reacting to BEL development, reacting to Dan Willer, and then going back to the very first episode one of Knox, which is Disco Doc actually reacting to Knox, reacting to Ren, reacting to Knox, reacting to Ren. You confused? So am I. Clear as mud. Without further yeah, ado, we we're are. gonna get into this video because <laughs> I see it's lengthy, but I don't mind lengthy videos. If you've been on this channel, you know that I'm all about them because I know that McFly is going to give us a lot of value. Let's just let's just see what's going on. Yeah, so I don't know much about these other reactors. Um, I know that Singer reacts, and I know uh, Bell Development, and I know uh, Knox Hill. I've just recently started talking to everybody else in here, and they've been very welcoming, welcoming, and it's just been awesome. Like I said. And then the community behind Ren is just amazing. Amazing. So it's going to be cool to see their personalities. Now, obviously, I'm reacting to season one, episode seven, which is Becca Doss. So 
I don't know how she's going to chop up the other ones or whatnot. So this is, we're just going with it. <laughs> Renception, episode seven, engage. Sometimes the weirdest things in life. So that's McFly. Okay. Renception, episode seven, engage. Sometimes the weirdest things in life can happen without really rhyme or reason. I was out last night at the store getting dog food and I got a DM from the one and only the Wolf Johnson. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you should by now. He's a reactor on the tubes. Link to his channels in the description. You know, he DM'd me and I was, we've been commenting back and forth on, on our channels, right? And um, wasn't sure what it was about, but he told, he all it said was, you know, it said, oh, I've nominated you. And he linked his, one of his most recent videos. And the video is called Renception Season 1, Episode 5, uh, Trigger Warning on Processing Trauma Docs. So I have no idea what it was. Uh, he told me to read the description because it'll tell me what to do, all those things. I'm not. So there's a trigger warning. I wonder what's going to get brought up. Now with Ren, obviously my last video uh, hit me pretty dang hard. Um, so I'm interested to see what what this is all about. And uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, I just want to add here. I'm I'm getting chills going into this because I'm I'm really eager to see what he's got to say in the rest of this. He was talking about Wolf saying something really nice to him in the DMs. And McFly did the same to me. He posted a, a YouTube short actually announcing that there had been a switch up in the person that he originally shouted out and tagged in the video, like at the end of his video. And he asked me if I wanted to be the next in line. And he said some extremely kind things about my empathy and compassion and the types of content that I share. And it really meant a lot to me to have you say those things written because I, I know that it comes from the heart and I know that this community is honestly just like, I'm convinced it's the most supportive community on YouTube, honestly, as far as like the reactor community, this this niche where we are all in this Rin phantom together, Rin demonium, we'll go with that or maybe we won't. But I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the kind of words you had to say about me too, because as we've talked about before, it's hard for me to believe good things about myself. So I thank you. I guess. Wow. So it's you know, she mentions the reactor community and we have this group, uh, discord group, and we've been chatting for a little while now, uh, regarding reception. And it's really cool that I was brought into that. I'm very thankful for it. Uh, again, I'm very new to Ren, uh, but as she mentions, they are very supportive. They meaning the community. Um, these other reactors are very supportive. Everyone on this roster here is so kind and supportive of everybody else. They pump each other up, um, and it's just it, it's very, very incredible to be a part of it. So thank you. We've talked about before. It's hard for me to believe good things about myself. So I thank you. I'm because excited part to learn of the more about Becca here too. is what I just explained about Renception, about where it started and how it's just kind of this chain reaction. So that's why I'm skipping a little bit simply because it's the same information. So that was episode one, I believe. And then episode two, I'm not sure. I have to watch this because I don't know where I, it's already. The, I'm already episode six. I don't even know where this is going, but uh, it looks like Wolf's watching the singer, that singer reacts. Who's a great, great reactor as well. One of my favorites. The link to all these Reactors so far that have been in this will be in the description below. So I have no idea what I'm getting into right now. <laughs> so we're just going to roll. Does anybody know what they're getting into? <laughs> we're just going to roll with it. That's literally how I feel. Like, I have no idea what I'm getting into. So <laughs> we're just going to roll with it. I have no idea what I'm getting into right now. <laughs> so we're just going to roll. We're just going to roll with it. Oh, if you haven't already, please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. Make sure you go and visit every single one of their channels and like, subscribe to them as well. We don't just talk about me on this channel. We talk about all the other creators as well. So, okay. I have no idea what it's, what's going to happen. So let's get into this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it is Wolf Johnson Hello. back again with another. What an awesome voice. He has like that radio voice right there man i am jealous well so especially his delivery okay, in the i have beginning. no idea what it's had, what's gonna happen so let's get into this hello ladies and gentlemen once again it is wolf johnson hello. back again with another reaction in today 
Wolf, can I have your voice? Thanks. Hey, it's my yeah. inception. <laughs> Seriously, Wolf has like the smoothest voice, one of the smoothest voices I've ever heard. <laughs> this yeah, no kidding. the naughty therapist, has set up a ploy to capture me via That Singer Reacts. Thank you for the nomination, my friend. And, Good dude. Uh, I don't really know what the heck is going on, but, you know, if, if Disco Doc is fancies themselves a uh, naughty therapist, well, I'm going to I'm gonna process some trauma right here. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tell you. Th I feel like Wolf is looking at this naughty therapist um, Disco Doc channel and him being a therapist, he's about to unload something. I don't know. I feel like I feel like they all are. Oh no. Things that I've probably never told anybody, so let's get it's going to say it in the description and it says it in his title. I don't know what it is, but there is a trigger warning, so bear that in mind. Uh, he did say in the description of his video that he'll be talking about uh essay. I can't say it because of YouTube, but just fair warning that tell you things that I've I'm reacting, like I said to McFly's video more than anything, but I do want to point out that he just mentioned that there was a trigger warning in Wolf's content, and it applies to McFly's video as well. You can see it in the title, so I just wanted to say that. In case you need to click off, just keep that in mind. Take care of yourselves. Let's get into this. I don't know. I don't know his name. Hold on. Maybe I won't interrupt my friend immediately. So, I really he reacts to a reaction. Like that singer reacts. And they dude, chill. Same. They yeah, he really is. He uh, he's one of the reactors that I've watched for many years. I'd say over two years I've been watching that singer reacts. It's crazy. And I've been on YouTube for about a year now, close to a year. And I've been watching him for like two, three years. That's pretty sick. It's at least I'm not the only one who's like confused by this. But seeing him that singer react confused, that makes me feel a little bit better. This? So true. Like I'm <laughs> have no clue what we're getting into here. So confused, but seems like thus far everyone has been. Wolf you know. doesn't play by the rules. Well, I don't okay. know. Let's just let's see what this <laughs> Wolf doesn't play by the rules. What is he about to break out? Seems like thus far everyone has been. Wolf you know. doesn't play by the rules. Well, I don't okay. know. Let's just let's see Wolf what just what lives. I'm here. Okay, I'm, I want to be respectful of this story here, so I'm not going to dwell on this too long. I do want to say the Inception, it's really cool. When there's more than one person talking at once, I tend to go into sensory overload. So if you see me at any point kind of just like freezing or kind of almost shutting down, that's that's what it is if that talking over like that continues, which again, I want to honor everyone's story that they're sharing. It takes a lot of courage to share difficult things like this, but if I need to pause a little bit every so often just to kind of recalibrate my brain, that's why. Well, just well, like yeah, there's a lot going Going on here there's I'm number eight so that means there's eight different things going on in this video I'm watching seven different things so being the viewer that's gonna be pretty uh, pretty you know crazy to unpack there and but I'm sure Becca's gonna do her best on making it the easiest for me uh, being the next reactor um, I know she spent a lot of time on this video and I really appreciate that. But like she said, we want to, you know, pay our respect to everyone else because they have stories that they're about to tell. And I have no idea what to expect. Oops. Um, don't forget my Patreon. When I was, when I was five years old, I was sexualized at a very young age. And I think I was, Wait, what? Oh, hold on. I think uh, McFly is about to go back. Hold, hold, hold on. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to talk over that. So I'm just going to listen. Just when lives. Um, don't forget my Patreon. When I was, when I was five years old, I was sexualized. Holy cow. So he's going right into this. Oh, wow. Okay. All right because I'm so distracted by the other reactions that are going on. Look, we all know the wolf's got a mind of his own. It's a wolf world. We're living in it. He turned this. Okay, that's so true. It, he does have a mind of his own. He turned this into this whole thing completely. And it honestly, I love that he did it. I love that he's using this to discuss something so 
important because it is a topic that we need to talk about. Unfortunately, like Wolf said, like McFly said, we have to be careful about how we say things because otherwise the YouTube overlords will essentially take the videos down. And we don't want that to happen because these are important conversations. But I just, I thought it was interesting that McFly pointed out the different reactors and reactors and reactors like the Inception there can be a little hard to process even though the subject matter is extremely serious. So again, that, that is not a complaint at all. It's just, uh, I feel your brother. I have a feeling all of us probably have. But yeah, it's it, it takes a lot to open up about something like that. He uh, turned this respond. idea on its head <laughs> and I have to follow that up. So I appreciate making this difficult. I have a little bit, I'm, I don't actually have ADHD brains. When I say that I'm not making fun, it's I have hard time focusing on one thing. I'm trying to listen to what he's saying, but I'm also just trying to figure out what's going on in the other part of the video. So forgive me if I back it up more than I should, but I want to hear yeah, the wolf because what he's talking about is super important. So I'm not including all of Wolf's video in here because I'm reacting to McFly's video, but in McFly's video and then go check out Wolf's video itself so you can get the whole story because his story deserves your time and attention if you haven't watched it yet. But if you're on this episode, you probably have watched the others. Allegedly, so Duck is not round or something like hugged. Allegedly. Oh, so he's not like, me to react. If it's like, maybe I should have watched all the other ones. From what she's saying i'm definitely going to right after this um i know becca's is an hour long uh but i need to go back and watch all these other ones because especially mcfly reacting to wolf and wolf's uh, original video uh because it's from from the sounds of it it sounds like Wolf just kind of went off the rails and he's doing his own thing. Um, but I don't know. I have to watch them all. That's just what I've gotten from uh, McFly and Becca. So, all right, let's keep going. Thank you. Somebody's like reaching out to me. You better, you get ready for these hands because that's just an instinct. <laughs> One of those things like. Look, I, I, I have not gone through something like this, so I, I can't say like I relate in any way, but having kids of my own, like it's not even having kids of my own, being a decent human being. I mean, I have my issues, but one to do that to a child is something that I could never fathom or I don't understand why anybody would want to do anything like that to a child. Right. And I understand he said this is a child doing it to another child, but that is, he said, a result of you know that other child's life and, and their living situation. This is systemic. I mean, there's a lot more people that do this than you really think. And there's seriously, there's a lot of people. There's the dark web that has way too many users on it. Um, there's like McFly is saying right now, I'm a father. I can't imagine anyone doing that to anybody of that age of, yeah groups that support each other in doing this i don't fathom it. as of as a dad of three kids i don't understand how anybody could have that mentality i just don't it doesn't make any sense yeah i don't get it either he's okay. got his, i love, he's got I love that right one there. of his kids in the background kind of made a little noise there as he was sharing his experience as a dad about how it's hard to even comprehend how another human can do that and you know he did mention wolf said it was another child however the generational trauma throughout the generations it just gets passed down oh so wolf said that it was another child okay yeah see i definitely have to go back and watch these other videos because i have no idea all right, let's hear it, Becca. Their child. However, the generational trauma throughout the generations, it just gets passed down and passed down and passed down. And I'm not a parent. I want more than anything in my life to be a parent. Hmm. And I'm not trying to make this video about me because I'm reacting to other people, but I want that more than anything in my life. So much like McFly was saying there, of course, he understands it on a much more personal level since he is a parent. But I cannot imagine, cannot even fathom what it would take to... to, to to do anything remotely in that realm to a child. It gets I don't want to get too into it, but I feel for her. I, um, I have some close friends that are not able to have a child and they may have to go the adoption route. And I know deep down they they want their own flesh and blood, right? Everyone does. 
not everyone, but if you want a kid, you want that. Um, yeah, I can only imagine what she's going through. I wonder what it is. It's complicated when it is another child and it's generational, but as an adult, like he was saying, I, I can't even, I can't comprehend it. It makes me sick. It, it's making my heart hurt just to think about. A lot more people that do this than you really think. And there's groups that support each other in doing this. Yep. And I, I just don't understand. I don't fathom it. As a, as a dad of three kids, I don't understand how anybody could have that mentality. I just don't. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it either. My, my <laughs> six month olds sitting next to me but that reminded me also roger and i a lot of times when we're having a conversation lucy will make a little sound she'll either sigh or she'll make this little like sound our beagle in in response and we'll talk to her just like that we're like yeah i think so too oh yeah me too we do the same thing <laughs> so i agree so that's a funny little note there that reminded me of my six month olds <laughs> yeah we do the same with our son and with our two dogs <laughs> That's cute that she shared that. Reactors, content creators out there on YouTube, right? I want to tell you guys what you see in front of you right now with me, with Wolf, with that singer reaction, with Disco Doc, everybody that's been on this so far, what you see, whether we intend it or not, is a persona. We are not who we are in front of the camera, right? I will say this. We are who we are in front of the camera, but it is only one part of us. We go through strife. We go through anger. We go through sadness. We go through all the emotions that every single human being goes through. We go through it. But when we get on the camera, we take the positive energy and we try nope. to push that out. We've seen... Yeah, it's very true. You know, you you see us for a couple minutes out of the day, um, you know, as we upload videos and whatnot. But it's, you know, I, I'm just like this. Um, but I am a father. I, I do go to my regular full-time job um, every day. Um, on weekends, we love barbecuing. We love, you know, going to the lake or going to whatever we're doing. I love mowing the yard. I love doing yard work or projects around the house. You see me as this. You see everyone here as they only do this. And it's only a very small portion of how we are, which is cool because we get to share that with you and you get to, you know, see that part of us, I guess. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with it, but anyway, I get what he's saying. That's awesome that he said that. Through all the emotions that every single human being goes through, we go through it. But when we get on the camera, we take the positive energy and we try nope. to push that out. We've seen the stoic, the very serious kind of thoughtful wolf, but we've also seen with his last few videos with the beef going on that he can be seriously funny too. Just because somebody may seem a certain way, you don't know what they're going through behind the scenes. And I understand this completely. Never judge a book by its cover. I learned that very, very early in life. And, and it's a, it's a very important mindset to have. You never know what somebody's going through until you're walking in their shoes. So they could be going through a lot. And I understand this completely. Like you go through that, that's a traumatic experience that your body is gonna reject. Your mind is gonna reject like, no, last time this happened, this was something bad. I don't like it. You're going to cringe. You're going to recoil. You're going to fight back. I understand. Yeah. You know what he was saying there at the end, the body keeps the score. A lot of times, even if you are trying not to, your body's going to have an involuntary reaction because it, it literally remembers the things that you have gone through that were traumatic. And I also wanted to comment on what he was saying there about how even if we don't want that to be the case, or it's not like an intentional fake facade that we're putting on, you come to our channels, you are sort of seeing a persona. And it's again, not that it's completely fake, but it is just 
part of us. Now, even for a lot of us who share a wide range of emotional content, like the really happy stuff, like for me, my big push reactions that I've done so far, I've only done two of them, can't wait to do more. But I was just overwhelmed with joy in those. Then several of my Ren reactions have had me sobbing and soaking my shirt with tears because they're so relatable and they hit, hit so hard and so close to home or they're just great storytelling. And then there have also been songs that are just super upbeat, fun things to dissect. So you're seeing all these different parts of me. And I have mentioned a couple different times in different contexts and in comments to you all on my channel that in a lot of ways I feel like my eating disorder in the past two years has completely stolen my personality. It had taken a backseat for about a decade, then it came back with a vengeance in 2021, and I'm still trying to climb my way out of that. It's been almost two years since I started working with uh, my coach, and then it's been a wild ride to get there, but I've shared that I feel like it takes my personality, like it's stolen it. And I just read a comment the other day from someone that said, I know that you say you feel like you don't have a personality, but I see it. I see it in your videos. I see it when you're reacting. I see it in your emotions. And I couldn't help but think of that comment when McFly was just talking about all that, because what I share, as I've said before, is 100% real and honest and raw and vulnerable because I cannot fake emotion at all. However, I'm also not getting the camera out to film all of the moments where I'm sitting there screaming at God thinking, hey, what is, what is good about this? Why is this happening? Or I know that you exist, but it's hard for me to believe that when I don't feel your presence. Pers Man, that's deep. That's deep. You know, I, 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 she's going through a lot with the um, eating disorder, uh, eating disorder, and you know her her body's playing tricks on her and and messing with her mindset, and then her mindset is messing with the other side of her mindset, and it's just a constant fight with her. And my heart really goes out to her. <laughs> Why is this happening? Or, I know that you exist, but it's hard for me to believe that when I don't feel your presence. Personally, my faith is a big part of my life, and if I'm getting to that point, you know, things are pretty dark, and those aren't times that I'm going to pull out the camera and chat. Now, I do have vlogs every so often. Man, her camera, or her camera, uh, she just said camera, her, um personality is very bubbly and I enjoy her personality and I enjoy her sharing all this because I am learning so much about Becca this is just awesome I it's not awesome what she has to go through every single day but yeah, my heart goes out to her but not not in recent months, but in the past specifically, where I do get out and I, I will talk about that stuff on camera. But for the most part, if you're coming That's primarily brave. for the reaction content, you're going to see the energy that I'm able to put into the reaction content. You're not going to see all the behind the scenes stuff, despite the fact that I do try to do my best to live as transparent a life as possible. So I just, just wanted to double down on what he was saying there. I want you guys to realize, like, as an adult, this is traumatic, right? As an adult, I feel like Everything that he's talking about right now is a natural feeling to have. Reactions I actually would expect from an adult. I can't imagine. Nobody should have to go through that, man. You have to go through a lot of stuff early on in life to start having these reactions that are almost instinctually more mature than anyone else that is significantly older than you. No child should ever have to be in a position where they're having to take these adult level reactions or having to have these adult level responses because of the things that they have endured. A lot of things that you instinctually do as an adult, you don't necessarily know why as a child and you might not even have the instincts, but there is this- My son is five years old. He turned six a week before Halloween. I just can't imagine anything like that happening. I don't even want to think about it. Man. As an adult, you don't necessarily know why as a child, and you might not even have the instincts, but there is this inner, inner just kind of knowing when something is wrong. And if you have been in situations that are like this, you, you want to do whatever you can to stop that, but then you get terrified. Just kind of like McFly was saying, I, I can't imagine what it was like going through this at five years old. And not only that, but being able to have the reactions that he had and respond in the way that he did, that's a level of maturity that a five-year-old should never have to take on, even if, even if it's not intentional. And it's hard. Five years old. 
you're supposed to worry about sliding down the slide, swinging on the swing, playing games with your family, going to school, all that jazz. Not, not what's happening to a lot of kids. I really hope that this helped you just open up. If not for anything else. Now, Wolf did say that because it's Ren, I mean, Disco Doc, the naughty therapist, he was going into that. Man, that, uh, I'm sure that kind of turned the tables a little bit on the whole, you know, concept of how this would go. But it's very cool and very, you know, unexpected for him just to open up about a story like that. That's something that's very personal and deep in his memories. Something that will never come out of his memories. else i do hope that it helped you heal a little bit because uh, i found that opening up on my own channel has helped i'll discuss this in detail i wanted to briefly remark on what mcfly was saying there about how you know he made an aside about how he's discussed his own ailments and things that he's gone through and then he said but you know comparatively it's not bad and i want to say that when it comes to trauma when it comes to traumatic experiences when it comes to things that are extremely painful no matter what it is there there is no comparison there is no person to person my trauma is worse this is is worse than you. This is, you know, there may be certain situations where specifically if you've dealt with trauma yourself and you struggle to believe that you deserve to have good things or live a good life, you may downplay anything you've gone through and say, oh, but I didn't endure what this person did. So therefore the downplay thing is so real. It's so true too. Just because you're going through something and it's not as worse as something that they are going through doesn't necessarily downplay what you're going through. Yes, they are going through something very tremendous, very trauma related, but so are you. From an outside's perspective, that same person that may be going through what they're going through sees your trauma and how you're reacting to it affects them and they may see it how you see them they may be trying to downplay theirs because of yours it's kind of a double-edged sword there yeah. or mine is less or theirs is objectively a lot worse than mine and while maybe there are some acts that are by definition considered traumatic and other things may not be by definition and i'm talking about like dictionary definition considered traumatic dictionaries and definitions don't matter when you're talking about emotions and your experience and what you have lived through so whatever painful experiences you have lived through i just want everyone to know comparing your trauma comparing your difficulties minimizes the very real pain that you are dealing with and I also understand it. I almost caught myself a minute ago wanting to do the same thing about myself, saying, yeah, I deal with all this stuff myself, the list of things that I've shared in previous videos, but I haven't gone through what he's gone through. And when McFly said what he said, it, the bell's ringing in my head. I'm like, no, Becca, don't say that because that's comparative trauma and comparison does not help anyone because trauma is trauma living through. That's so true. Comparison does not help anyone comparative trauma and comparison does not help anyone because trauma is trauma. Living through something painful is living through something really painful. And it honestly just sucks all the way around. But I also deeply understand the desire to, to try to give other people's trauma more weight than your own because you feel like they deserve it more or that they had it harder because you're downplaying your own thing. Even if you don't realize that that's what you're doing, a lot of times that's what's happening. And I've also had much the same experience of opening up on my channel about both my chronic illnesses and specifically about my eating disorder 
recovery and other mental health struggles has been an extremely healing and cathartic process for me. And part of that is directly attributed to the wonderful and beautiful souls that come on this channel. And I appreciate you all sharing your stories so much with me in the comments, but one thing that makes my heart hurt, and please keep sharing, I'm not saying don't share, but hearing that so many of you have gone through such difficult, such traumatic, such painful Seriously. experiences in life, it just highlights to me how important it is to continue sharing my own, to be able to give you that space that you can connect with each other in the comments. Stories have to be shared. And, you know, she's mentioning comments right now. Just from my last uh, Ren video, when uh, it was the tales of Jenny and Screech, in the comments there, I had to take a couple days uh, to go through them just because I, I needed away from that video. I needed um, to clear my head before I start looking at comments. And I, I made that community post about it. The, when I went back and actually looked at those comments, they were very, very supportive comments, very loving, very caring. Um, you know, a lot of virtual hugs and a lot of people sharing their own stories. And it really, it really helps the mindset. So I do appreciate that. And have conversations that you might not have with other people in your life, or you can relate to something that I share or something that McFly's sharing here. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm not alone in that. I always say that my main goal with this channel, with you're any video, alone. is to leave people feeling more understood, less alone, or give them a reason to laugh or learn about something. So- Hey, that's so awesome. So awesome, Becca feeling more understood, less alone, or give them a reason to laugh or learn about something. So I, you know, that, that connection, that feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling understood is a big part of this human experience. And being able to express your emotions is a major part of that. And it's something that not everyone is able to do, much less on camera in front of however many people may end up seeing your videos. So. Yeah. It's hard to upload something where you get emotional and it's hard to not get emotional or thoughts in your head when you hear certain things or watch certain things or react to certain things as I'm starting to find out. So I just want to attest to that. You all have proven it to me, how healing this can be. And yeah, I think it just speaks a lot to sharing your lived reality, sharing your experience in life, and then hearing other people say, hey, maybe my circumstances were different, but I understand exactly what you said about this right here. I felt the exact same way. That is just super powerful. And when other people are able to have even a small fraction of healing from something that has been healing for me as well, when I share it, blows my mind that this is reality, that this is real life. I'm so thankful for you all. Trauma can lead to bad things but also it can lead to a different perspective on everything so I'm, I'm not trying to say what happened to him was a good thing but i'm saying even the worst of things can lead to some positives i want to quickly say don't sell yourself short there brother do not sell yourself short because you also have a very unique experience and i think it's amazing that you're part of this online community and just sort of on the note of what he was saying there one of the lines that came up for me while he was talking was from Illust of Our Time, towards the end where Rin says, living in depression is a blessing in disguise. And he's, I tried to address this in the reaction. There are a lot of different ways that can be taken. Obviously, a lot of people will try to say, oh, this pain is going to make you stronger and there will be something good to come from it. And I, I have said that in the past myself, I don't particularly now at this point in my life think that that's a super helpful way to look at it. Now, that does not say ignoring the concept of silver lining. So don't think that's where I'm going, but I'm just saying a lot of times people will throw that out there. You know, it's like that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, I don't know. Sometimes what doesn't kill you just makes you hurt really bad or makes you just feel 
really like crap and you're not necessarily feeling straight right. from it. But it Definitely. is also something that it gives you the opportunity that if you choose to let it, living with whatever struggle it is that you're dealing with personally, can give you some insight and a window into empathy that other people do not have if they have not gone through something similar. And then being able to offer that presence and that listening ear or that shoulder to cry on to anyone else who relates or would like to share similar things, it is it is a blessing. But it doesn't feel like a blessing when you're in the middle of the depression. It very much is something that happens when you go through hard things. There, there are a lot of things in life that we go through and I, I think that the choices that we have are we either let them destroy us or we find a way to flip it around. And that is so much easier said than done because there are times in the past year or two alone that I have repeatedly said, this is destroying me. There's no way I can keep going. There's no way. Specifically talking about my eating disorder, but also other things. There's definitely times where, you know, as Becca mentioned, um, there's times where you look at your situation and in your mind, you are just thinking, how can I keep going? This is really eye-opening for me. And I appreciate everyone in this, uh, in this reception being so, so supportive. As I said, these, these other reactors in the community and just everybody involved has been super supportive and loving and caring and just across my platform completely across all the different communities that are brought together on my channel are very supportive, very loving. And I appreciate all of you. Seriously. Things in life as well, and other people with all of their different circumstances. But you can either go to that completely hopeless place, or you can try to hold on to the one, the one little thing in one day that gives you a sense of. I use the phrase cautious going. optimism a lot because the word hope is scary for me. That things might be able to change, that things might be different, that they might not always be as painful or as bad as they feel right now. And again, I don't say that in any way to minimize. I just think it is a matter of perspective of taking the painful situations you're dealing with and deciding, do I want this to completely consume me? Because that would be not only easy to do, but also completely understandable because these are extremely hard situations and it would be understandable for you to want to just let yourself drown in it because it can be all consuming. Or you can do your best to try to flip it around, to try to turn it into, I don't want to say something good, but something that can help other people, even if it is- Try and inspire them from what you're going through. And that's exactly what Becca is doing on her channel. She is very inspiring, and I need to get to know her more. From what I've learned in the past couple of days from this community and her, it's awesome. I keep saying awesome and amazing and great and incredible because it is. I can't say it enough something so excruciatingly painful it's even like hard to talk about and you i also want to point out you have no obligation to share your trauma with other people but even if you aren't sharing your specifics it has the opportunity to help you develop that deeper level of empathy where other people just can kind of pick up on it and feel that from you and i can feel that from mcfly here as he's watching wolf's video feeling the love and the support like that through the screen i think just speaks a lot to someone's ability to con and I can't, I didn't mean to cut her off. Wolf's video, feeling the love and the support like that through the screen, I think just speaks a lot to someone's ability to convey emotion literally just through the screen. It's, I love it. Okay, I'm having a little trouble with the multiple people, four different people on screen right now talking. No, five different people on screen, so, but McFly's not talking. I can feel the emotion from Becca reacting to McFly and Wolf and Nick. And it's, you can see it all, especially Wolf. McFly and Becca. Now I feel like this video is completely contrast because Becca is a very fast uh, speaker and I'm trying to catch everything she's saying um, and understand exactly what she's saying. But again, I'm learning. I'm learning so much about her right now that it's not even funny. 
Let's keep going. And I'll talk. No, five different people on screen, but McFly's not talking. Apologies if I seem a little a little disoriented. I'm just trying to get my ground here. And somebody always has it up. That right there is key, right? Even in the worst traumatic experience, man, I'm getting emotional to him talk about this. Even in same brother, the most traumatic experience, right? But this is pretty traumatic that he went through. He's saying like it could have been even worse, and he's thankful that it didn't. Like it wasn't worse. <gasps> Wolf, what are you doing to me, bro? I told myself I wasn't going to get emotional anymore on my channel. What are you doing? I did not know that he was going to further talk about that comparative trauma there, and I definitely did not expect to see Wolf do what I was just talking about a minute ago. He's sharing this extremely vulnerable experience, but he also, even if it was unintentional, downplayed it because what he witnessed someone else go through in his mind was worse. So at least what he went through wasn't that. And again, there are situations that on the surface seem objectively worse or better, but when you're talking about something that has had a traumatic impact, you aren't in control of how that affects you, of how that has affected your nervous system, of how that has affected your way to go through this life. So again, I get on a very human level because I feel like this myself a lot, the urge to downplay what you've been through because you know there are other people who you think objectively have it worse. And maybe they do, but the comparison doesn't really help you and it doesn't help them. Just saying that in general, because like I said, myself, I do that a lot. I get into that game of downplaying anything that I've gone through because I'm talking to this person who has this specific it was different and my mind says nope they deserve more compassion they deserve more empathy when really if you're a human and you've gone through a traumatically painful event you deserve all of that and more and connection and love and i'm getting pretty emotional myself i think that is key for people yeah, to remember to stay grounded. i've seen before somebody complaining about something that is like really hurting them right and whether it's on social media or whatever i've seen that and then people are like well whatever i went through this blah 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 it's like you don't need to devalidate or invalidate what somebody's going through like everybody's mm -hmm. issues and troubles are super major to them whether you think it's major or not they haven't gone through what you've gone through right and just like you haven't gone through what they've gone through so you don't know how it's impact how something's impacting a person like i said before and just because somebody has a worse than you doesn't mean that your feelings aren't valid either so i think there's this whole dichotomy here that really can, you can dive deep into, but it's a really good perspective that he has right now. One thing that I love about this community and this kind of like sect of the reactor community is the support for everyone else, is the genuine wanting to be there, wanting to be an encouragement, wanting to be kind, wanting to show compassion to each other. And what McFly was talking about right there is literally what we just discussed. So like I said, I wasn't saying what I said to let him know or to teach him something because he clearly knows exactly what I'm talking about, as does I'm sure every other person who's participated in this thus far and many of you who are watching. But even if you look at an objective list of bad things and maybe your thing that you have you think is lower than someone else's, you're still dealing with that pain and that still is valid and worth the care and treatment and help that you deserve to be able to break free and heal from that. You could dive deep into it and I just want to reiterate what he said. Just because someone has it, if you think objectively worse than you, it doesn't mean that your feelings and your pain don't matter. I, I love the way that he said that. Yeah, you know, this is so true and I... She said it before, everybody that's participating in this has much, much respect for everybody else. And they are very supportive of each other. And just the love that I've gotten so far, again, I'm very new to Ren and this community and these other reactors here. They are just so supportive. It's a great community to be a part of and learning that they're all going through. I, I want to say something similar because the reason why I say something similar is because they're going through trauma. They're going through uh, personal um, hurdles that they have to get over every day, every, you know, <laughs> Yeah. This is just crazy. Mad shout out to Disco Doc for starting this whole series and making it what it is. All these reactors, everyone participating is making it what it is. I feel like I'm not adding much um, to this reception, mainly because I 
I don't know. It's, it's difficult to hear what they're going through and all I can be is just supportive of them and respectful to them and their stories and hearing Becca's side of things is just phenomenal. I love it. I love being a part of this. This is awesome. Hey, for now, <laughs> Inception is real. Yeah. Inception is real. Inception is real. It was a weird time. That was different. She tried. I don't even know what the... I mean, if we... Uh... That singer reacts saying that was different. Without a doubt, this is completely not what I expected. I watched... Um, I think I watched Jesse's uh, Bell Development. I'm pretty sure I watched at least to like halfway through because I had a feeling I knew I was getting into Ren. I kind of had a feeling he would involve me in this because out of everyone here, I'm closest to Bell Development. Um, and I'm growing closer to everyone here. But, you know, he he's the one that introduced me to Ren introduced me to everyone here and you know i'm just very thankful for that so shout out to bell development jesse as well with this generally speaking i think honestly the minimum requirements to be a parent is that you at least try there's too many parents out there that they almost see their kids as a burden and i've seen it firsthand and they don't really try they're just getting through it i think the best thing you can do for your kid is to try try and be a good parent learn from the mistakes your parents made and then make that's huge right there learning from the mistakes that your parents did my biological father was not really in my life he was but he wasn't he was only there because the court told him to be there um my mother and my stepdad which he is i call my stepdad my father and my biological father is my dad because my stepdad he's the one that raised me He's the one that taught me everything that I know. And my dad, my biological dad, he only wanted to be around us as uh, when we got older. He didn't want the hard times at the beginning. And it's just, uh, he's had um a rough end of his life passed away from from uh, lung cancer and and i feel like my brother and i didn't really give him the time of day towards the end of his life because of how he treated us and my mother at the beginning of our lives. You know, that, that stuck out in my memory a lot. You know, he would, he would take us to skate parks and, you know, let us play video games and stuff, but he wasn't being a father really. He just let us do that so that he can do his own thing and, um, you know, take us back to our mom after the weekend. There was a time where I was skateboarding on the side of his apartment and I, I uh, messed up a skateboarding trick and slammed my head right here into a metal gate, uh, and I was bleeding, I was crying, I was, uh, my brother went inside, got my dad, he came out, and, you know, he tried to clean it up and everything, but it obviously needed some attention from a doctor, and turns out I needed to get, like, two or three staples right, right here, 
very close to my eye. And I remember it being very painful all weekend. And that happened on, I think, Friday night. And my mom picked us up on Sunday night and saw that and was very upset with my dad for not even calling her or taking us to the doctor or anything. But he didn't even call my mom to let her know that I was pretty, pretty badly hurt right above my eye. And, um, that's probably the first incident that really sticks out of my mind as for him not really trying. He tried to clean it up, but as far as trying to do the right thing and getting me the treatment or the help that I needed from the doctors, uh, that was, that was not there. Make sure that you and your kids don't make those same mistakes, right? I think that's important. He's right. You don't know what's happened to you until after you've matured and become more keen to what's going on in your life. Kids don't know what trauma is. They just know something bad is happening, right? And for him to, I understand him blaming his mom, but also now as an adult understanding, like she was a teenager and to come to terms with what's happening is probably traumatic for her as well. So he's kind of feeling that empathy there. He doesn't have to either. He doesn't have to feel that empathy, but he is. So that shows growth. That shows maturity. Just want to echo that. Uh, that last point is really true. I do think that a parent's a number one responsibility is ultimately to try, to try to protect your child, to try to teach your child, to try to raise your child in the way that they need to be raised in this world, to try to insert whatever here when it comes to child raising. Again, I'm not in that position myself yet. It would be the biggest miracle in the world, and that's the number one thing that I'm hoping that I'm able to recover for. But having gone through what he has gone through, like McFly was saying, a wolf doesn't have to have that kind of empathy, but he is choosing to because he has let this horribly traumatic experience or sounds like more than one horribly traumatic experience help him channel that empathy instead of it completely making him hard to the world and that is honestly a testament to strength that you don't know unless you've lived it and I've never shared what I'm about to share publicly either and I can't talk about the details of it because I only shared it in therapy this year for the first time that therapist then abandoned me without much warning so I'm kind of frustrated that I shared something that has been hidden in my brain and in my heart for like 25 26 years years with this oh that sucks for her to open up to somebody and then have them just abandon her man that's rough i'm so sorry frustrated that i shared something that has been hidden in my brain and in my heart for like 25 26 years with this therapist who then left me with some abandonment trauma on top of that but i've shared it with a couple other people in my life and all i will say is that what they're saying is absolutely correct when you're a child and you go through something that's really serious that's really difficult that's really painful and traumatic you a lot of times don't have words to put to it and i know in my case a lot of times there was also a degree of shame and embarrassment that like if i say this then what what I think is actually wrong and I'm going to I'm going to get blamed or I'm going to get in trouble or I have done something wrong therefore I am wrong and right and that happens through everyone's mind even today if I say this what's going to be the backlash right now imagine that as a kid as a youngin and I am bad so I got to keep my mouth shut because this this must be something that everyone goes through right not not right. Not the case. Literally not until the past eight months did I come to this realization about one specific instance in my childhood. And I don't want to try to make this sound like anything more severe than it is, but it was definitely something, it's one of those instances where as a child I, I knew it was wrong, but then I also didn't feel like I could ever complain about it or talk about it because that would not only cast me as someone who had been bad or shameful, but it would hurt this other person. And I didn't, didn't want to do that because that was the wrong thing to do, right? <sighs> There are no right answers except trying to open up when you're able. And when you're a child, you just can't make sense of a lot of stuff. And that's why a lot of times there are a lot of adults who are going through trauma therapy processing things that are 20, 30, 40, 50 years, years old. I also want to say the experience that I'm referencing was not in relation to my parents at all. I'm very, very fortunate. And I have the blessing of having parents who not only tried, but in a lot of ways excelled. And that doesn't mean they got everything perfect because no parent can neither. N none of their parents got everything perfect. Even 
though they got a lot of things right, not everything was perfect. If I am ever given the blessing of being able to be a mother, I will not get everything perfect because it is not possible. But I'm very... It's very impossible to do everything by the book because there is no book on being a parent. There's many books, but in what Beck is saying and what everybody is feeling there's no there's no book to tell you everything that you're supposed to do right you know you use common sense you use you know your your mindset to help you do the right thing all the time but you're never going to get everything right Very thankful that I have parents who worked as hard as they could to give me a life that had opportunities and had security and showed me love. And those are things that I do not take for granted one bit because I never, even in times when I was having some really dark emotional moments growing up, I never had to doubt that my parents were trying anything that they could to help me. Sometimes I would get frustrated, specifically it was related to my eating disorder, because my eating disorder would get mad and scream, inwardly or outwardly. That's something that I'm really fortunate to have had and I, I don't take that lightly and I don't take it for granted at all. I've had people come back to me and say, you know, this video helped me a lot or helps whatever, which is still weird to me that I'm able to help somebody like that. But I just want to remark on what he said there. It is it is a very weird feeling, a very surreal feeling in, in a good way, but still very weird when you share something that is painful. And, you know, as we've talked about, it is a cathartically healing process for you to be able to just speak some things aloud and to put things into words. However, when you get the feedback from different people and they say things like, thank you for leaving that in the video that helped me make a decision or that helped me go through with this action or it helped me know I'm not alone or again back to feeling more understood more connected less alone it is just a very weird experience to get all of those comments and to know that as a result of you being raw and vulnerable and open and sharing your own pain you have given others a vehicle where they feel comfortable to do the same whether they're sharing it in your own comment section whether they're able to talk to people about it in their own life like offline completely that's a majorly important thing and and it's not that anyone has any obligation to share, but if you feel like you have this desire or have this urge and you want to share things, I can almost guarantee you there will be other people who relate, even if the specifics are somewhat or slightly or drastically different, they will be able to relate to you sharing your emotional pain and experience on a very core human level. And that is that has been the biggest blessing over the past six months or so on this channel, is getting to know so many of you and seeing that you feel comfortable enough to trust me with just small parts of your stories. I know that all of you have gone through infinitely more than you could put in a comment or two, or however many comments you decide to leave, but I don't take the responsibility of holding your stories lightly either. I think about all of you. I read every single comment. I do my best to reply to all of them that I can. I'm a little behind right now simply because of my own health, mental, and physical stuff, but I read every single one, often more than once, because I want to know your stories. I want to be able to think of you. I want to be able to pray for you. I want to be able to give you that ability to know that just someone is listening, especially if you don't have anyone else in life that can serve that purpose for you right now but it is all man i want to agree 100 percent. becca is just speaking it out there and 100 percent agree you know there's there's definitely been times where you get those comments right i've gotten those comments and to think that there's so many of you that trust me with a couple minutes out of your day is just mind blowing. I appreciate you and I thank you. And you know, you're, you're making this community grow with every comment, every subscription, every like you make this community grow and we merge other communities and we will keep merging other communities and just sharing the love, sharing the support, and just growing together. It's just awesome. It's awesome reading your comments and your, your, you know, when you share your stories. It's really cool to read. I appreciate that. Maybe I'm overreacting. It is what it is. Huh.
overreacting because because he's a reactor. I don't know if he meant to do that, but I enjoyed it and he got a little laugh there himself. So I think we've progressed, we've evolved very well in certain areas. You know, we're a little more tolerant of a lot of different things. Um, but I also think there's a lot of areas that we have a lot of work to do still. Uh, specifically, though, I think oh, the overall outlook on mental health in general, but even more specifically, uh, men's mental health. I think there needs to be a drastic change. You know, we've been trained through centuries of cultural stigmas that men getting emotional is a bad thing. That you know, a man needs to be, you know, be a man. That's what we hear all the 100% McFly is speaking truth. That's awesome. There's a reason that the suicide rate heavily, heavily outweighs for men than it does for, for women. I want to pause it right here on the screen that he pulled up there because this conversation that McFly is, is having here is extremely important. And obviously, I'm, I'm going to let him talk about this because he is a man. I, I'm not. So he has that firsthand experience. I know how difficult it is to talk about and open up about mental health stuff, but I also am aware that a lot of times and in a lot of ways, it is a lot easier for girls and women to do that than it is for boys and men to do that. And what he was talking about there is that there is kind of like the societal narrative. And specifically, if you grew up in a place where this was really just like pushed and pushed and pushed, you know, be a man, suck it up. Don't, don't ever show emotions. Emotion is weakness. All of that. Ooh, yeah. Scream. Ah, man, toughness. I'm being a little, a little exaggerated there. But it's true. I mean, she's exaggerating, but it's completely true. You know, uh, men are not supposed to be vulnerable, right? When there's a slight chance of vulnerability, we get attacked. Now it's not, it's getting better, but it's definitely not at the spot where it could be. And I'm glad McFly is talking about that and Becca, especially too. But like, it's a real thing. That is an expectation that a lot of people still kind of have. So these tough men who I'm not saying that they're not tough, but I put them in quotes like that because that is promoted as like the only way that men should be in this world. And then you can look at the statistics that he pulled up there for the suicide rates in this country. And it is highest in middle-aged white men. And there's not... Some of that could be due to just like reporting different different things with data reporting stuff, but also usually, and I'm, I'm going to say this here, and I, I, I don't know what this conversation is going to be like in the comments, so feel free to say whatever you want about this, but middle-aged white men specifically, a lot of times, yeah, they have a lot of privilege in the world, but as a result of that, they are often the targets of a lot of attacks, of a lot of negativity, of a lot of insults, of a lot of just, just hatred. And I'm not saying that some of that's not warranted. There are some middle-aged white men like that. There are are some middle-aged white women like there are some Most young definitely. people of any race yeah. that are the same way some older people of any race that are the same way but looking at that statistic there it doesn't surprise me <sighs> that's just really sobering and highlights how important this conversation is because mental health is something that a lot of men a lot of men that i know personally and a lot of men that i have just seen online that i've had the fortune of connecting with via my own things online people that i have had conversations with who have shared with me like i've never shared this with anyone before because i was told i can't open up about it because i was told it's not manly because i was told it's not the big tough brave thing to do when really sharing that vulnerably is the toughest most brave thing that you can do it is the single toughest bravest thing that you can do point blank in the period for all my women out there, I am not taking away from the other things that you go through. Didn't think you But were. specifically talking about mental health and showing emotion. Men, men, it's a, there's a huge stigma around it that I think needs to change. Men need to share too. They need to feel, they need to express those feelings in healthy ways to be able to be better people. Like I said before, I think that's something my channel has helped me drastically with is opening up. It's, it's, I've now become more in tune with myself, in tune with my emotions, in tune with what makes me feel a certain way. And therapy has helped a lot with that, but I wouldn't have gotten therapy without this channel knowing that this something was bothering me and I needed to do something. So hopefully. I just want to point out how amazing it was that he said he would not have gotten to therapy without his channel. So much like I've shared with you guys, there are certain things like creating the GoFundMe account that I just created a few days ago so that I can continue to see my current outpatient treatment team for another several months so that I can finally break free from this eating disorder and move on with life. That is something that you all directly gave me the courage to do. You not only gave me the courage, you gave me the idea for it and you said, go for it, do it now. We want to be able to support you. That right there is amazing having the community itself has the power to change or to inspire others just by a comment just by a comment it's crazy but it's so true 
good for Becca for getting over that and, and moving forward and wanting to, you know, continue on her path there. That's incredible. The fact that McFly has gotten to therapy as a result of his channel, that is such a testament to the power of being able to connect and share on that human level. And I just, oh, brother, I'm so, I'm so thankful you were able to get into therapy. That's, that's amazing. And to know that your channel yeah, played awesome. a role in that, that's, wow, that's amazing. You know, my mom, you know, she does have a big heart, but she just does not know how to hold in her emotions. She doesn't know how to control herself. She's very narcissistic. She's very manipulative, even if it's not purposeful, even if it's not intentional. Intentional. He is that way. I just want to speak to what he's saying here really quickly. Even if it's not purposeful, even if it's not intentional, that doesn't take away from the pain and the effect that it has on him as a son. Doesn't take away from the fact that that is reality, whether she intends it or not, whether it's because of a mental condition. And I'm, again, I'm not a diagnostician. I'm literally just going off his words here or a mental state that leaves someone predisposed to acting in these certain ways even if it's unintentional and you know that it's unintentional, or even if you know that they aren't aware of it, but you see it happening, it doesn't make it easier to deal with. It still sucks. It still hurts. It's still really hard. And right. I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge that as he's sharing his story here. He is that way. She's one of those people where if she can't... Becca's so full of just heart. She has a huge heart, enormous heart. And I respect her so much for that control everything going on that she flips out you now my wife's been there when she's literally thrown a five-year-old tantrum banging on the walls and stuff and you know, i don't need to go into detail because honestly those are her things to work out but how it affected me right is my childhood trauma while nowhere near what wolf was talking about it definitely you know it had its effect on me you know my, my mom my dad divorced but that whole thing and i mentioned earlier that there's things i'm finding out even now that she did that i didn't know like you know my dad's holding me when i'm still a baby and she's throwing a hot iron at him and holding a knife to him while he's holding me like just these things that normal people don't do man normal people don't do those things and had something similar um that it was flip-flopped um after my parents got divorced um you know my my mom ended up uh dating a guy and we lived uh with him or, or he lived with us. Um, I don't remember entirely. I was too young. I was probably three and a half or four, um, when this happened, but I very vividly remember my mom talking with us and this guy comes, uh, comes home to our home and is mad about something i don't i don't know what he's mad about i'm too young to understand anything that's happening i can just see right i know that my mom is terrified i know that he walked in the door and i see stuff being thrown um from our front door we had like a hallway that went straight to like our back door where our backyard would be and my room my uh, brother in my room was uh, right next to the back door, but it was attached to that main hallway. So my mom's standing in the hallway, but in our room. So the hallway like went through our room. And I just see stuff being thrown, uh, pots, pans, remote controls, knives, forks, all that jazz. Um, I remember seeing that. I don't remember much after that, but I do remember that. That's true. My mom and my stepdad Same. argued a lot. There's a trend there. Argued a lot. And they argued in front of me. And because of what happened with my mom and my dad divorcing, when they would argue, I would just freeze up. You know, I would freeze and I would just sit there and listen to it all. That right there, you heard of the nervous system, the fight, flight, freeze response. When you're faced with a traumatic experience like that, you do tend to have, actually it's technically one of four responses, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And he's describing the freeze response here where he was watching those horrible arguments and he would just kind of like almost shut down and freeze there. And that is such a very real sign of trauma, as well as the fight response, the flight response, the fawn response. They're, they all have a significant part to play. But I have, I have dealt with quite a bit of the freeze response myself. 
and it's really difficult no matter what experiences has triggered it it's really difficult to feel like you just can't do anything not even do anything you can't even really think through anything you can't even comprehend or process or communicate it's it's a hard place to be in and yeah i i feel like there's been you know everybody has experienced that freeze uh portion of that and it's you know i i can think back to a couple times when that happened um just with me you know around that same scenario that i was talking about earlier and it is a defense of your nervous system to try to protect from whatever pain you're witnessing, to try to shut off anything that it can in your brain, to try to shut out some of that pain and those horrible situations. And it sometimes might help numb you out a little bit in the moment, but a lot of times that ends up in stuff like you learning how to dissociate from a young age when things stressful happen around you because you've had to go through so many hurtful and painful and traumatic experiences. And oh, that just it just breaks my heart. And because of what happened with my mom and my dad divorcing, when they would argue, I would just freeze up. You know, I would freeze and I would just sit there and listen to it all. That's affected me now with my wife. When we argue, I, I tend to go silent and she hates it. She wants to discuss it, which is the right thing to do. It's trying to get past that trauma of what happens when you argue is it's a divorce. I don't want to argue because I might say something that would then lead to a divorce, right? That is so real. It doesn't surprise me that he said what he said earlier about parents that try and about how the best that you can do is take what you know your parents instead maybe what they did that wasn't right and try to improve upon that yourself that's what he has done here and it takes a massive amount of courage to make that step to protect your children to say okay this relationship is not something that is worth risking my children's safety over to try to restore this relationship that might be past repair anyway so that is a really painful place to be in and it's a very difficult yet extremely mature adult decision that you've made there brother that is difficult and hard and courageous and strong and I just wanted to acknowledge that Other yeah it's when you when you have two people um, that are married that are going through a very tough time um, you know everyone with an infant has gone through that you know the the child screaming and and you know everyone's frustrated because you can't you can't um, get them what they need because you don't know what they need. There's that loss of communication because the baby doesn't know how to communicate and you don't know how to communicate to it. And you're getting frustrated and they're getting frustrated and they're, they're crying because they're not getting what they want or what they need. Um, that language barrier at that time, that communication when that's missing can cause a lot of stress in the household. And, you know, it, as that child gets older, you know, they start talking back, they start throwing things, they start having those terror tantrums. It gets very difficult when two parents don't have the same um, methods of handling things. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it could be very confusing for the child too, because one person handles it this way and the other person handles it this way. Well, if he, if he does this or she, he or she does this, what's his punishment going to be? Is it okay to do that because the punishment's too light or there's no punishment at all from one parent? It's, it's very difficult to find the middle ground there. But it's very important to try your best to find that middle ground and not if there's not let the child see any kind of argument or anything like that because um, it could be traumatizing you never know what their memory is going to hold yeah well said Oh, and I beat myself up about that every single day, you know, and every day I feel like I feel like I'm a failure every day. I feel like I have to climb out of this depressive state just to feel OK. Said I wasn't going to pause it, but I am because I related like heck to those statements. Said every day I feel like I'm a failure every day. I feel like I have to climb out of this depressive state just to feel OK. That is heavy and that is deep and that is extremely relatable and thank you for sharing that. It was extremely vulnerable and I know that a lot of people are going to be able to relate to that statement. These last two weeks have been brutal. Yeah, the definitely feeling like a failure every day. 
uh, maybe not every day, but there's definitely times where I feel like a failure to my son just from actions that I've done or, or even if I get home from, from work late, right. From my, my full-time job, if I get home from work late and he has to go to bed early because he has school, I at least want to say good night to him, but I feel like a failure because I couldn't even play with my son for five minutes that day. Or if I get home from work, I'm just so tired and I can't give him that 100% that he deserves. I don't have the energy. I don't have the bandwidth to do it right now. And that sucks. They're growing up and I don't want to miss it. Like I said, it's a work. It's a work in progress. I need to learn. You know, McFly says it right, right there. You know, I don't want to miss it. He's already almost six. That's just insane. And when I think back, you know, especially now that he's in school and our work's there and we just, there's not enough time in the day to spend with our child. Sure, I can have him stay up late. We can stay up late. We can play. But now you're affecting his sleep. Now he's going to wake up the next day and just be exhausted. He's not going to have a good day because I was selfish. That's hard. Yeah, I don't want my kids to go through that. I don't want them to be affected by my issues like I was affected by my mom's issues, so. I just wanna say, brother, the fact that you are aware of this and you're sharing this in this video, again, so vulnerably, so openly, that shows the heart that you have. The words that you have said when you're talking about parents and children in this video, outside of your own experience with your parents, the things you have said about your children, about yourself, it's so obvious that you want your kids to have a better life. And I'm not saying that you're like, oh, I had this horrible life, but you don't want them to, like you said, endure the things that you went through. You want to be able to shield them and protect them from that. And it is extremely apparent, not only in your words, but in your emotion that you are showing here so openly, so honestly, just being so raw about it, that you have a desire and that you are trying. And I'm sure you are succeeding more than you give yourself credit for, more than that voice in your head is letting you give yourself credit for. Because being willing- There's, there's definitely times, especially recently, when I get home and I'm just exhausted from work and that 20 minutes of playtime that I get with my son is very special. In reality, I have two hours of time with him. Um, we get dinner, we have to do homework, but that 20 minutes of playtime It's special. I enjoy it. I don't do it enough because I will play for 20 minutes and then I want to take a break and just do my own thing for 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour and he's there, but maybe I'll throw in cartoons just because I need some alone time or just to decompress from the day and just be selfish. I hate myself for that. There's definitely times when I need to be a better father. And I hopefully, hopefully can change that soon. 
because I need to. And I know that. Going to go to therapy, taking that huge step is possibly the best thing that you can do for your children because it is going to equip you with the ways that you can take care of yourself and then therefore be more present for them because I, again, I'm not a parent yet. Hopefully one day I will be. But I have a smidgen of that guilt when I'm on my phone and our beagle Lucy is looking at me and I can tell that she wants my attention and I'll say something to her then I'll go back to my phone and I, I feel guilty about that because of it, a meme that I saw almost a decade ago of someone sitting on the couch on their phone and someone had put text on this dog and made it look really sad. That has stuck with me for years. I cannot imagine how much harder it is to have to deal with that when you have three children at home and you want to be able to be there for them, you want to be able to be present, but you are dealing with so much crap yourself in your own head that to be physically present, a lot of times you have to mentally distract yourself and be somewhere else. And that is an unfortunate part of this process. And that's something that can get easier and can get better with therapy as well. But it's hard. It's hard. And I just sending so much love and compassion it's to you right now. Hard. Okay. Wow. First of all, again, I just want to commend you brother for sharing all of that for being so open and willing to share your heart and for showing so much empathy and holding space for wolf there i hope that i was able to return that favor and do the same for you at least to some capacity i was kind of smiling there at the end because i thought that you were really saying i'll chase down the person we do later then you kept saying it and i realized that that was your original clue for who was going to be next however you then sent a dm to me and let me know that you were doing a little switcheroo and you posted a youtube short about it so thank you so much for not <laughs> nominating me McFly. Like he said, he a was humbled to have this position he did to be able to hold space for Wolf and to share his own story after that. Him reaching out to me to ask me to do this episode 7 likewise humbled me in a way that is, is hard to put in some words other than that. It just meant so much to me and as I've said about a few different things in this video, I do not take the responsibility lightly and like he said, I am always here if anyone wants to share anything that you're dealing with. Now I will do my best to reply. I cannot guarantee a reply every single time, but I do my best to do that. But as I was saying, I do read every single word that anyone shares in the comments here. And usually I read those comments more than once so they stick in my brain. So if you just need to say something out there and you need someone to listen, please feel free to do that. And I can guarantee you there are probably other people in the comment section here who will also respond to you and encourage you and lift you up even if I'm not able to. Or if I am able to, they will continue the chain of kindness because that's what this community, specifically those who are part of this, you know, you say Ren fan base, but I've been calling it a movement because that's what he is doing. Ren is single-handedly like changing this environment, changing this culture, and it's been amazing to watch and an honor to be a part of. I I definitely feel that 100%. I feel that this community is very strong, super strong, and very supportive. So I thank you for inviting me in, welcoming me, and make me feel at home. I really appreciate both Wolf and McFly for bringing this larger conversation about men's mental health to the forefront because, as he was saying, it is something that is not always talked about and definitely not talked about as much as women with their mental health issues. And women, women's mental health still deals with its own stigma. So men's mental health dealing with even more of that, it makes all of the difference when people are able to speak up and they feel open enough to share their own story because one more story out there gives one or infinite other people the courage to and do the same right you never know who's gonna see that right and that could lead to one two three five ten hundred thousand different lives changed just by that one video or that one comment or that one five second conversation So thank you for doing that. That is amazing. Having trouble figuring out how to end this. So I will just say, if you want to know who this next reactor is, you might have to be pretty sharp to figure it out. I don't think that having a mild attention to detail is going to do it for you. I think you got to be pretty sharp, maybe even extra sharp. And to be honest, I think you're good. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for my cheesiness and my corniness. We're going to move on from that and check out episode eight. I absolutely love her personality. She has such a welcoming and just lovable personality. It's hard not to like her. And not that I've seen anything that I don't like. It's just awesome 
to know that, you know, there's other, you know, uh, I'd hate to say influencers, but they are, we are, I guess, influencer. Um, yeah. Doc's channel because he is sharing every one of these in order on his community tab and I will see you guys in the next video. Please take care of yourselves. Please reach out for help. This world needs you. See you next time. Yeah, that's awesome. I love Becca. She's so cool. She has a great personality, isn't it? I mean, what's not to like about it? <laughs> Very cool. Major thanks to everyone involved. Um, the community for showing your love and support. I cannot say that enough. It's just awesome. So that's going to be it, guys. This is Season 1, Episode 8, the final episode of Season 1. Now you may be thinking, what about Season 2? Who's going to be the next reactor? You may be thinking, well, what now? Well... You should be able to find this reactor on any day that starts with an S and ends in a Y. Talk to you guys later. Stay cheesy, my friends.